your pastry, bakery, and quality food, CK Restaurant is the only place to be. We do catering for birthdays, weddings, and all related services. We have all kinds of local foods, American, European, and even beyond. Come and have a taste of our local juice, ebe and other services. At CK Restaurant, customer satisfaction is our priority. of owning your dream homes. EJ Investment is here for you. Secure our quality bungalows with two, three, or four bedrooms or our story building, three or four to five bedrooms at very affordable prices with flexible payment plans at our Sanyang Seaview Estate where you can enjoy the cool breeze with modern infrastructure such as the roads, covered drainage system, modern electrification with street lights, gated entrance with security posts, and social amenities such as gas station, shopping mall, medical clinic, park, school, children daycare, and a lot more. Our dedicated team of professionals will keep the estate clean at all times, provide security and patrol team within the estate premises, install latest technologies such as CCTV, Wi-Fi, home network installation, solar panel, and power backup system. Also, check out for our additional home facilities and interior design service, such as premium tiling, wall plaster, home landscape, fingerprint home lock, and a lot more. Visit our office at Senegambia Kololi Highway and get a free site visit tour or contact us on 4464-838. WhatsApp us on 3259-220 or you can visit our Facebook page or Instagram on EJ Investments. EJ Investments, we are first in properties. Islamic microfinance is becoming an increasingly popular mechanism for poverty alleviation, especially for developing countries around the world. This microfinance service adheres to the principles of Islam as a form of social responsibility. Yona Islamic Microfinance is the Islamic microfinance of choice in the Gambia, trustworthy and reliable. At Yona Islamic Microfinance, we provide savings products, current accounts, financing products in conformity with Islam. In addition, Yona Islamic Microfinance also offers local and international remittances, takaful fund, management of zakat, management of awqaf, trading and investment, and building of strategic partnerships to bring financial services to the doorstep of the poor with donor projects, madrasas, youth organizations, women groups, and farmer organizations. Make a choice with Yona Islamic Microfinance today. For more information on Yona Islamic Microfinance, call 377-2151 or 9832151 or visit Yona Head Office at Tipa Garage, Bakote or visit any Yona branch located countrywide near you. that we can inform the general public about tobacco control issues in the Gambia. Um, Senabu is going to do the presentation on behalf of the office. 
And I just want to thank you for coming. I know you are all busy, but despite your busy schedule, you single out our invitation and that you are here with us. So as I said earlier on, it's going to be very short and precise. So I think I can kindly allow Senegal to do a short presentation. You know, the Directorate of Health Promotion and Education, the NCD unit under the Ministry of Health, is implementing a one-year grant from the Tobacco Policy Action Fund for Africa, that is TOPAFA, and it's been run by the Management Health Sciences. And we are working towards reducing tobacco use through health promotion and enforcement of tobacco control laws in the Gambia. The project actually is in four phases, and the second phase is the one that is on the verge of completion. And with regards to the project, we are looking at three areas. When we, know, when we look at tobacco control, we know we have different, different areas. But with regards to this project, we're actually working on three different areas. That is the graphic health warnings on the tobacco products packaging. If you had noticed in the market now, all cigarette products have an image. So that is what it is referring to, the graphic health warning. And the other aspect it's working on is ban on tobacco products, advertisement, promotion, and sponsorship, and 100% smoke-free public places. So uh, before we start on the activities of the Topafa, I just want us, I know a lot of you know about the laws. I just want, of, um, want us to reflect on these three points. That's the tobacco-free environment, the TAPS. When I talk about TAPS, it's the tobacco advertisement and promotion and the graphic health warning. So when we talk about the tobacco-free environment, what the law says about tobacco-free environment is that every person has a right to a small free environment. That is what the, poly, the, the act is saying. Everyone has a right to a small free environment. But we know where someone's right stops, it's another, where another person's right begins. So a person that is consuming the pro tobacco product should ensure that he does not expose. Why are we concerned about smoking or tobacco use? Because when you look at non-communicable diseases, when I talk about non-communicable diseases, we are referring to the cardiovascular diseases like the hypertension, the stroke, we are referring to diabetes, we are referring to respiratory diseases like asthma, cancers like either breast cancer, lung cancer and the like. But when we see these non-communicable diseases, they are on a rise and they have risk factors. And when you look at the risk factors, tobacco is one of our risk factors, and tobacco is a risk factor to all of these non-communicable diseases. And the problem with tobacco is other risk factors are unhealthy diet, physical inactivity, and the harmful use of alcohol. But if I am drinking alcohol, it only affects me. It does not affect the next person towards me. But when it comes to tobacco, we have first-hand smoking, we have second-hand smoking, and we have third-hand smoking. It does not only harm the person taking it, but it also harms the people around it. That is why we are so keen when it comes to tobacco control. So actually, the next one is actually talking about the comprehensive ban on tobacco advertisement, promotion, and sponsorship. What does this say? It says that all forms of tobacco advertisement, promotion, or sponsorship, including cross-border, are prohibited. A person shall not initiate any tobacco advertisement, promotion, or sponsorship, including cross-border promotion and sponsorship, produce, publish, or make accessible any material for tobacco or engage in any tobacco advertisement, promotion, and sponsorship. What is this section of the law saying? We have seen that now in radios, TVs, or newspapers, we hardly see people advertising tobacco. It's because of this section of the law. But we know that the tobacco, con uh, the tobacco industry, actually, when you stop them at this site, they usually find other subtle ways of advertising. And when we talk about promotion, what does it mean? For instance, going to a Luma and saying, buy one, get one free. When it comes to tobacco, there is no promotion. There is no buy one, get one free. There is no buy one packet of cigarette, get an umbrella, or buy one packet of cigarette and get a T-shirt. And in other ways of promotion, if you had seen before, they were cars that the moment you see the cars, your mind go to a particular brand of cigarette. But the law had actually also advised them to desist from that. It's either the cars are painted white or a neutral color. And what did they do? They went to buy umbrellas and give it to the petty traders. The moment you see the umbrellas, you see a certain kind of cigarette. That is also advertisement and promotion, which is also banned. When we talk about sponsorship, what does it mean? For instance, a particular region is doing a Nawaitan or any other forms, and they come and say, OK, I want to sponsor the The law is saying no. Tobacco industries have no right to do sponsorship. So when we talk about comprehensive ban on tobacco advertisement and promotion, that is actually what we are doing. So the last part is talking about the packaging and labeling. As I said earlier, the, the graphic health warning. It was not only health warning. Usually in the pack, you usually saw uh, tobacco harms you and harms people around you. But now we're saying tobacco is harmful to children with the photo of the child. 
I know a lot of people will be like, but why is the child? Why is it not a person with a lung that has a black spot or underline? But as we said, tobacco does not only harm you, but harm people around you. And there is no known evidence of tobacco being useful. All we know is it's harmful. And we know one puff of cigarette is really the, 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 the contents that have been re released are up to about 7,000 chemicals. And out of these 7,000 chemicals, research have shown that 70 of these are carcinogens. That is, they cause cancer. So when we talk about tobacco product packaging and labeling, we are referring to that. The law says that a person shall not import, manufacture, distribute, sell, or offer for sale a tobacco product unless it's a unique packet. What this means is there is no sale of single cigarette sticks. Cigarettes should be sold in a packet, and the packet should not contain anything less than 20 sticks of cigarette. And the labeling of such programs should conform with the packaging and labeling required by the ministry, prescribed by the minister. And in this context, the minister is actually referring to the minister, minister of health. If you had seen now, we had actually given every importer that prescribed prescription, that is the child and the measurement, and it shouldn't take anything less than 75%. And when it comes to the gamma, it occupies the, the graphic warning, that is the image and the health warning, occupies 81.5% of the entire packet. So all tobacco products should conform with this regulation before they are sold. So coming to the TOPAFA activities, we said we are actually in the second activities, and these are some of the activities that we have done. One, we have actually done a quarterly joint enforcement operation with the enforcement authorities. According to the Tobacco Control Act, the enforcement authorities include, one, public health officers, two, environmental officers, three, police officers, and four, custom officers. So this is actually, we actually team up with all of these four we go around to see that the, the, the tobacco control laws are being enforced, whether it's the smoke-free environment, whether it's the ban on tobacco advertisement and promotion, or whether they are selling the prescribed packets. Radio and TV panel discussions. We have a series of radio panel and TV discussion to talk about the smoke-free laws. As we said, when we started, we talked about that every person has a right to a smoke-free environment. And the law is saying that you can smoke, yes, but you have to be 100 meters away, and you're not accepted to smoke in any public place. And when we talk about a public place, what is a public place? A public place is where more than two people meet, whether it's the markets, whether it's the offices, even the cars. If you own a car and you give me a lift, you have no right to smoke there because it becomes a public place. So we have had radio and TV programs on smoke-free laws. We have also had development of TV and radio sports. If you had a scene on different televisions, we have had scripts that have been running on TV and radio. Before the end of the uh, press briefing, I'll play one of the English version. So we have regional orientation with regional education authorities, head of schools and cluster monitors. We have done surveys that talk about that target youth. We know that smoking is a habit that is usually commenced at a youthful age. And we know peer pressure is usually one of the factors that actually allow people to start smoking. So we were like, OK, let us engage the school authorities, because they spend more time with the kids, at least when they know what the law says for example, if they have a shop near the school that it's selling single cigarette sticks, because all these laws are placed not to um, kidnap anybody, but to make sure that uh, tobacco control is being regulated in the country. That is why, because we feel if a packet of cigarette costs like 120, a student going to school might not be able to afford that. But if the, there is a corner by a shop that is selling single, single cigarette sticks, accessibility becomes easy. So we uh, actually engage them. We also had advocacy meeting with the Gambia Tourism Board, Gambia Hoteliers Association, and Smoke Free Law. When we talk about smoke free laws, one of our challenges is especially with the TDAs, the tourist development area. People smoke freely and all that. And when we're talking about tobacco, I know everybody's mind comes to cigarette, but it goes beyond cigarette. It also includes shisha, it includes the cigars, it includes the ones that are either stuffed or sneeze and the like. And when you're looking at uh, shisha now, it is on an increase, and it's the youthful age. They usually use it, especially women. And research is actually showing that one hour of shisha session is actually equivalent to 100 sticks of cigarette. And it's not as if it does not contain tobacco. It actually contains tobacco. And there is no, I know the, the, the tobacco industry actually use subtle ways to actually push tobacco toward us because it has a very nice scent and there is a water pipe and they will tell you this does not contain or it does not affect. No, it's more dangerous this than the cigarette smoking. 
So we also had orientation meeting with tobacco importers. We know all the people importing tobaccos and the different brands. So we had a meeting with them to actually talk about the graphic health one because a time duration was given to them to make sure that these packets at least are now, we don't want to see any packet without the graphic health warning. So we had a meeting with them. So still on the activities, we had nationwide caravan. We had a caravan on graphic health warning. We know it's something new, so we went nationwide to actually, with a musical caravan, we went to places that attracted a lot of people, like garages, like the Lumos, like markets. At least when we get there, people's curiosity was actually uh, ignited. They were able to ask questions, ask about the rationale behind the graphic health warning and the like. We also had orientation meeting with border security. We know that we have a porous borders. Our borders are porous and the illicit trade is on. So we actually also uh, went to almost all the borders to actually orient them on the graphical warning, what to look for, and the cigarettes. So you know every project goes with M&E, monitoring and supervision. So we also had a supervision to, say, to actually gauge the progress in which we were going. So. Uh, uh, the, the tenth one is actually what we're doing now. That is the quarterly media briefing that we usually do. Because we know when it comes to tobacco control, there is no way we can actually push this without the media. If we had been in our office talking, no one would hear us. It's you that we rely on to actually push the message forward. So the last one is advocacy meeting with National Assembly members. We know we have been in an election year, and it was very difficult to get them. So we'll be having the meeting tomorrow to talk about them, because we know when we actually want to push laws, this is the house that will actually help us to push these laws. So uh, these are the activities that we had done in this quarter. We only have one pending. That's the meeting tomorrow with the NAMS. So what are the activities we're continuing for the next quarter? We'll have the continuation of the TV and radio panel because we know engagement with the media is a continuous process. The quarterly joint enforcement, because we feel the moment we stop, people go back. During the enforcement, we'll go to hotels and all of that will seize the shisha, but just give it a week, they have started again. So the media briefing will also continue. We'll also have a midterm project review to see how much we have gone, lessons learned and challenges. We'll also go forth with the regional orientation meetings, this time with the PTAs, the Parents, Teachers Association, and the Mothers Clubs. Mm -hmm. And we'll have the multidisciplinary teams. Every uh, region has a multidisciplinary teams, and in going the agriculture, the extension workers, the public health officers. At least this is a team that usually work with grassroots communities. We feel before starting the, uh, the taking people to court, taking people to prisons, it's better to have engagement, at least at the grassroots. They know what is happening. Then we believe they will not actually be caught by the law. We'll also continue with the orientation with the faith base. Because when we talk about the faith base, we are talking about both the Christian and Muslim uh, um, councils. We know when it comes to uh, disseminating message, these are key people that actually people listen to. They have authority and power in their various areas. They can use their summons to actually preach the tobacco control uh, laws. And we'll also have youth, because we know when we look at the uh, smoking, it's usually started at the youthful age. At least when we target these people, they will not be smokers and go for. So still, we'll have the shopkeepers, because when, we, when it comes to the sales of single cigarette sticks, most of the time it's the shopkeepers that actually do this. So we'll have meetings with them, we'll have meetings with the loomers to talk about tobacco advertisement and promotion. Because when it comes to loomers, we know there are a lot of promotion that happens so that they will know what the law says and abide by that. We'll also talk to the film industry. When we talk about tobacco promotion too, the film industry plays a huge role because you might have a script whereby someone smokes. Someone watching it might think that, okay, if you are stressed, what you need to do is smoke. For example, the entertainment industry, if someone is having a song and smoking, and we know the, the era that we are in, imitating everything that the celebrities do, the era of TikTok and all of that, we might take a script of that song and start using cigarettes, which is actually prohibited. So we want to have a meeting, orientation meeting with them to actually tell them what the law says and what the do's and the don'ts are. We'll have an advocacy meeting with senior management of relevant ministry agencies and departments, whether, whether it's the Gambia Civil Aviation, because when we know, when we talk to the smoke-free laws, the airports, the hotels are usually a very good area. So commemoration of World No Tobacco Day. We know World No Tobacco Day was actually celebrated in May, but we didn't have a grand style because due to the funds, we are not here. But the next quarter, we'll uh, actually want to go to a region, have a grand celebration, and make sure that everybody knows about tobacco. Uh, as I said, uh, projects do not go without monitoring and supervision. So as uh, the last quarter, we'll also have uh, monitoring and supervision to actually gauge our progress. 
Okay. So we're now at the challenges. We know that every, uh, with every success comes challenges. So what are the, some of the challenges faced? We have limited funds to strengthen enforcement and increase community outreach. We know there are a lot of things we do without money. And when it comes to the ministry, all that we have is through grants. So we don't have domestic financing that we can use to do more media engagement, to go to the grassroots to talk to people. So there is weak enforcement, especially in the tourism area. When you get to Senegambia, you see there is a scrupulous use of shisha and the like. People are smoking and not respecting the um, smoke-free laws. Sales of single cigarette sticks. Uh, we have been doing the monitoring. Usually, I know that most uh, side corner shops are not selling single sale cigarettes unless it's their loyal customer. Well, if anybody, random person goes in, but we still know that some people are still selling single cigarette sticks. We were on, on, on enforcement, and in a particular region, people, the people selling the cafe tubas are the ones now selling the single cigarette sticks. So when you ban them from this, they use other ways to do it. So they are still selling of single cigarette sticks. Exposures to and by minors. According to the Tobacco Control uh, Law 2016, a minor, and in the constitution of the Gambia, a minor is someone less than 18 years, is not supposed to engage in the trade of tobacco, whether it is been selling the tobacco or buying the tobacco. So, and we have seen some shopkeepers, when they leave, they leave their minors there that are engaged in this. So they have been exposed, and we believe if someone is sending the kid next time, for him to try, it becomes easier. So mobility, we know we cannot do most of the time. Most of our activities are not only geared towards the Western region, but uh, nationwide. So the mobility is usually a problem. So this was the caravan that we did. And this is when I talk about the graphical warning, the prescribed packets, this is what I am referring to. Now every packet should have this. The front should have tobacco is harmful, and it should be black and white. The sports in English. Tobacco Control Act 2016 came into force in December 2018. Section 9 of the Act gives every person the right to a tobacco smoke-free environment, and a person consuming a tobacco product shall ensure that he or she thus not expose another person to tobacco smoke. The Tobacco Control Act 2016 prohibits smoking including the use of shisha in public places, workplaces, and public transports. A person shall not smoke in any part of any public place, workplace or public transport and within 100 meters of such place. These places include hotels, restaurants, bars, office buildings, schools, garages, prisons, police cells, video clubs and public service vehicles among others. Any person responsible for a public place, workplace or public transport shall ensure the observance of this section. This message is brought to you by the Ministry of Health and Management Sciences for Health. Um, public health and uh, maybe five from the custom and the other um, partners to train them so that at least at their respective region they can also do a step down training. And uh, when it comes to the implementation, it can be very smooth. But we also have a challenge because most of the people, if we don't like um, uh, inform them or, or, or engage them, if they hardly do this enforcement at their various regions. So this prompted us to have these in the project included in the project so that at least every week we can be doing. And when it comes to the enforcement, the police have the upper hand. In any enforcement, the police have the upper hand. And uh, we solely rely on them, and uh, we are always with them. And thank God we have a very active uh, person, that is the focal person, uh, Commissioner Kinte, is always with us and is always pushing. So, and uh, pa Bojan too is also effective. And other um, uh, partners res uh, representing the various um, institutions are also very proactive. They are very effective. So we are doing our best, but we need support. Coming to the monitor of single sticks, this is a collective responsibility, as I said earlier on. Um, it's difficult for us to, 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 to monitor all this, but you, if you go to any, 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 any shop, like a journalist, you can also help us to know where are the hotspots in terms of um, selling out these single sticks. Like um, uh, Senebu highly uh, mentioned, these, um, uh, is it uh, 
Tangana or what? Cafe Tuba. Cafe Tuba. When she went for this arm trek, this recent trek, she realized that those selling Cafe Tuba also sell this single stick. Because around Basse, you hardly see people, see shopkeepers um, selling um, tobacco product. Because they said it don't, they don't have much profit in it. And when you are caught looking at the charges, it's too much. So they will not be able to pay those charges looking at the profit there. So most of these um, people that used to sell these single sticks are do selling cafe too bad. but here we don't do that, that much i don't know whether it's the same thing around the combos but we need your support um if you go out you can also do a random checkup and uh, when any information that can be shared and you can all equally sensitize those people it's a collective responsibility uh, our general observation is the use of tobacco when it come to the uh, national prevalence is 16.7 percent with the youth, it's about 10.6, 10.7%. Yes, looking at that, compared to the previous study that was done in 20, 2008, we are seeing a decline. But to us, our observation, we think that this is increasing, especially on the use of CISA, because this is a new thing in the Gambia. The tobacco, uh, the tobacco industry, they are so powerful and so intelligent, they are all different tactics. When you try to counter one of their tactics, they come up with uh, another new one. So this is why they invented this um, um, CISA and that they mainly target the youth. This is why youths are engaged with different flavors. The use of CISA, um, the prevalence, I think, 8.4. 8. 8. 8.4. But I know if we do a study here again, it will might go up to 10. This is based on observation. It is going up on daily basis. So we have to continue sensitizing the public, especially the youth, and it's also part of the project to engage the youth on this. Uh, this is why we are targeting the school children, because from there it starts mm -hmm. and uh, gradually as you grow older. And there is a restaurant um, around Senegambia, I can't remember the name. Uh, at night, especially around 12 onwards, if you enter that restaurant, idea, Lights will be dim as the night goes, and that you see nothing other than smoke. Mm -hmm. Is it Rios or something like that? Rios, yeah. It, yeah. Rios. Rios, yes. They have different types of lights. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I once went there, but it's so terrible. It's so terrible. And they will be targeting those, um, uh, um, those such restaurants. And I, I know there are plenty of such in the, in, in the Senegambia area. It's so terrible. So I want to ask, um, you guys Yes, 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 because we inform our partners, the police and uh, the public health officers, the environmentalists and the NEA about the, 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 the Cafe Tuba people, those selling Cafe Tuba, so that we can be vigilant. Because the idea came when they were just from the um, monitoring visit, this um, graphic health warning. And uh, this has been um, shared by our colleagues, and uh, we'll do our best to follow them, to monitor them, to ensure that um, those <coughs> wanting are taken to justice with regards to the tobacco control laws. CISA is a tobacco product. You should not smoke in public place. And uh, CISA, uh, these, um, the gadgets should not even be displayed. It, it, it's a tobacco product, just like uh, a packet of cigarettes. It should not be displayed. And uh, if you go to any place and uh, it's displayed, you have the right to report because you are not part of the employee, but you have the right to report to the police. And uh, so suppose if it's police or myself, I have the right to confiscate, and the persons will be taken to court. And uh, we started that. Even the sale of single stick, we, we started that. We've uh, arrested them, and uh, we've confiscated some of the packets that they already opened. Mm -hmm. On open ones, we don't. But those already open, we confiscated them. And uh, if today, I, they were in the vehicle, and I have to put it in the office. So those materials. And I could remember when we were doing the first one, a uh, series of these um, uh, CISA gadgets where, 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 where the ports were confiscated and uh, were taken to uh, the office. So we are, we are doing that. And uh, we need your support. Report all, any, any, any issue that you might come across so that at least we can go there and uh, uh, 
Oh, it's musuboro. It treats everything. But we have found out that it does not treat everything but causes more harm. Because there are some that has atropine. Atropine is something that constricts the vaginal muscles and you might feel a sense of tightness and so forth. So some people will tell you that this actually replaces the feeling I have for a man. So these are just uh, temporal feelings that one might happen, but the later complications are more. So we just advise women, especially those that will have infections and the like, to actually visit a health facility if they had seen any changes in discharge, color, or the scent, or their, uh, um, how is it called? Urinating frequently, because what happens is the anatomy of a woman is very short, unlike of a man. So when we sit, we collect infection. So we actually do the health education messages to talk to women, to actually do the personal hygiene, to actually wash from front to back, not back to front, because we know we have different microorganisms. The microorganisms that are in the vagina are, the, are ones different from the ones that are in the uh, anus. So we actually also talk to them about the use of uh, cotton pants, because we know we live in a tropic area. The more you use plastic pants, the more the microorganism uh, activity increases. So those are the kind of things that we advise them to do. You children as young as uh, using one year, two years using tabac, because what they do is it actually helps in bed wetting. So they have actually used, yeah. using this tabac on younger kids, and uh, older women are using it because they feel it also treats arthritis. So there is this health education we went to to a certain village. So when we started talking about the taba and the immediate effect is those as the dizziness and all of that. So one imam just got up and said, now you're talking because I have had many complaints from men that at night their wives get drunk. Now we know the reason why actually they get drunk. Because when you take it, you don't know where you are. All you want to do is sleep and all of that. We had a woman that came all the way from Soma to come and seek help from the office that she has. Uh, she's a AI company and a lot of women come, but the, when they come for the tech or something, these are sleeping, these are in the room. Nobody knows what has actually happened. So when she propped for that to find out, most of them are using this tabba. Patricia Reiner 
Kiwi Idaho Ranch, Light Up Gold, um, Tomatine. I mean, the list can just go on and on and on and on. Lipo lo han reglu itaral jigin la ki yo yu regla nyo doh. Skin Care Plus nak emu yin si Gambia rek. Nyunga United States, nyungi Gambia fi. Be pare, bude yangi anywhere in Europe, mun nain la ko mail. Within three days rek, nyeti fan rek, nga jot say diw. Emu yin si lo rek, dan la consult temi. Bala nyin la jay diw. Then you have a free consultation for what you know exactly what you have to do with your hands. Then you have to say that you have many perfumes, you know, fragrances, men's shirts, accessories. We do do dresses as well. We do blouses. I mean, we do shoes. Name it, we do them. Skin Care Plus 2020 is our year of perfection. Zero tasks. Who make any real me fake? Can what if perfect tasks? Can what if I'm problem with canam? Can what if I'm problem with picture? Book a man who fake and erect new law. The plastic fee. Love, 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 love like fire. Bring my love, your book of my fire. Love, 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 love like fire. Alba, you're not transfer us. You're transfer us. Have code in you. Okay, what's up? You see, I did sort of sorry. I got it. Bill and Rock, Alba, back up. But I'll last have you so Taria. Ah, but my kid and then Kunu Barataria. Ah, Jano, you are not forest the bureau. Gambia Tonko now, Lombardia bureau. Ah. Bring coin of four cartons. But is it called a kino carton in four bolong blabe? Fifty six branches smaller so the Gambia jam. Huh? Ah. Gambia kono and in Gambia bantala bangol. Unka kono kia bere. Hm? Kono sifa sifa for falindiro for nyadi left a member na kodi to poton in kodi marao. Janum number one in Yonta. And num for another another enterprise is sotale. Bolong bolong nyindiko. Domorol fanan kol fanan be firale le da di mani domorol di fanan betiat. Gambia dao da ya longa kumfa kendol sotale di. Ha, e wamo e odiat. Ha, apelenda. Ni wamo kani na lafta ni elen kendol e bina. Ya le buka ni lakuol la baraka. Ha, ya londel chosa no lo. La baraka. We live in a day and age where technology is creating a world without borders, filled with unlimited potential to improve the lives of the people around us. InnovaRex Global Health ushers in a new way of leveling the playing field with increased access to quality healthcare services delivered at your doorstep. Our qualified professionals are equipped with state-of-the-art point-of-care testing technology to conduct tests such as kidney function, liver function, electrolyte tests, body composition, hemoglobin, A1C, and many more services with the highest efficiency in delivering results. The addition to our flagship Wellness on Wheels, more fondly known as WOW Delivery Service, brings the entire clinical experience full circle. IGH has remained committed to creating the future of healthcare delivery. Gone are the days of sending loved ones outside the country for basic medical services. Innovarex Global Health offers a new peace of mind and takes pride in delivering the quality of care we all deserve.